Right, um, yeah, thanks everybody for coming. Um, this is the kind of fun part of, well, fun. Um, hopefully everybody's been having fun at the whole conference. Um, yeah, so uh, the regular annual sort of conference board meeting. Um, last year we had a whole bunch of topics and we kind of rambled on about all of them for the better part of an hour and then had questions at the end. Um, this one is a little bit different because if you've been kind of keeping up with the mailing lists, there's pretty much only one topic that's on the board's mind at the moment. This idea of uh, a foundation or some legal structure. Um, and yeah, we're going to be talking about this now. Um, and please, if you have any uh, thoughts, comments, questions as we go along, the microphone at the end is sort of always open. Um, and you know, we can kind of just work our way through it as we go. Um, and Axel, I think we said you would start explaining why we'd, what we're thinking and why we're doing this. So over to you now. Yeah, will do. Thank you, Rich. Yeah, uh, welcome everybody to the board meeting, to the question and answer session, ask the board. Uh, as Richard already mentioned, um, we spent a lot of time this year in investigating whether we need a legal structure and if we need one, um, what would be the ideal one. So to spend some words uh, up front, I mean, we all know ZUSA and OpenZUSA have common roots, history and values, so we are basically sharing the genetics and we're also sharing the logo for the most part. And uh, I think this is a, is a great benefit, uh, a win-win situation for both of us, which we definitely want to keep. So everything that we're doing here is not to separate us from ZUSA, it is uh, to gain more flexibility for um, the open ZUSA community. What we've noticed in organizing the last um, conferences, but as well in, in sponsoring other projects or receiving money from sponsors, it is an issue that the open ZUSA community has no legal entity behind it. And if, if there is a, a company, for example, that wants to sponsor us, or we as a community think this project is beneficial and we want to donate some money for it, we just can't do it at the moment. Just for legal and as well for, for tax reasons. So the idea is now, um, let's put a legal structure in behind of uh, OpenSUSE. Um, and just to kind of add a little bit of extra context sort of from the SUSE side, you know, SUSE is uh, you know, keen and always trying to help OpenSUSE in these kind of things, like taking sponsorship, like arranging hardware and uh, you know, providing services. But um, you know, just with the nature of you know, the fact it is a company, you know, when dealing with other companies, you know, suddenly things like donations become way more complicated because, you, know, you know, an external company might not want to give Suzo Linux GmbH a huge chunk of money. Um, and dealing with things like invoices and taxes, you know, with the lack of an open Suzo legal entity gets, yeah, gets complicated with that. So it's not a case of, of Suzo doesn't want to help with that, but just because of the nature of the organization that it is, it, it can't. So, yeah, I think the motivations we have already uh, mentioned, partnering with our organizations outside of SUSE, receiving donations, being able to give donations as well uh, to other projects, and uh, so also uh, what, what Richard mentioned, in case we need some additional hardware, some service or something like that, we could easily sign a contract with another company uh, to provide us this service, even if it's on a, uh, on, on a free basis for us, so that they are uh, charging their efforts and getting a, a kind of a donation received from our end. All this is currently not possible. So we have event investigated various uh, options, various legal options, what could they be? First of all, a so-called foundation Foundation in German, a Stiftung. Um, this is a model uh, under different legal or uh, local legal legislations. Oh, was it the right word? I don't know. I'm not a lawyer. <laughs> uh, that other projects, like for example, the Document Foundation, who's driving the development of LibreOffice, uh, have chosen. A German one is the so-called e.V., an Eingetragener Verein. We've translated this now with uh, an association. 
This is a fairly simple thing to set up. You just need seven people. Uh, you pull a template um, from um, a, a website, from the, the, the court website, fill it in, go to court, and get registered. Um, another option could be an umbrella organization. So that means we are joining um, an organization like, what are they called, Rich? S SPF or something like that? Um, SPI or like or the SPF. Software Freedom Conservancy SPF. or like the Linux Foundation. So it's like these umbrellas that exist to you know, help either help provide these kind of services for open source projects or be like a home for them more legally. Right, yeah, thanks. So, uh, in that case, the umbrella organization would sign the contracts and uh, receive a, a fee from us. For example, I don't know what that charging 10% of the donations or whatever. And option four, we keep it as it is, which is, of course, not the intention that we're having. Um, to make a very, very long and uh, <laughs> discussion uh, short, the proposal of the board is the so-called foundation, Stiftungsmodell. The reason for this is um, the foundation, based on its um, setup, on its rules, is much, much more stable like uh, the EV, like the Eingetragener Verein. In the worst case, um, just a construction, but not far from reality. Uh, we get a bunch of new members into uh, the EV, and they are suddenly changing the purpose of uh, OpenSUSE from uh, providing a community and develop a, a distribution to uh, selling T-shirts or whatever. And as, if, they has a, if they can get a qualified majority, they can do that. And then OpenSUSE as such is gone. And this is something that we strictly want to avoid. We want to get some legal independence, but we want to make sure that the structure of OpenSUSE and the purpose of it as a non-profit organization dealing with free software keeps persistent. And the ideal um, legal form that we could found up to now is the foundation. And from the, the SUSE side of things, you know, one of the... <clears throat> One of the unique problem, one of the unique aspects when like talking to Sousa about this is, of course, like, like we said at the beginning, you know, keep, you know, keeping that closeness and that relationship is sort of a key part, you know, both from the, the sort of the community and the board's motivations, but also from Sousa's. And looking at how other projects have done this, you know, there's, there's lots of open source projects out there that have an EV, um, and you know, sometimes they have some of these problems with influence, sometimes they don't. Um, but no one really has an open has, has built a foundation or built an EV in the open source world in the circumstances that we're doing this. You know, normally it's a case of a project starting from the ground up, and they need some legal entity just so they can exist, or they're forming their foundation or their EV in response to you know a nasty situation with their their previous corporate sponsor, and, and, then, and therefore the, the foundation is some lifeboat of independence to get away from you know the nasty corporate entity. The, the one of the things we have here is we want to stay close with Sousa. Sousa wants to stay close with Open Sousa. And, but we, we want the foundation for the purposes we've been talking about. How do you, how do you model that? How do we you know, structure that so the, the foundation is, is solid and stable in its own right and solid and stable you know, with its relationship with Sousa? Basically, can we use this foundation approach to codify into law the weird and wonderful and unique relationship we have with Sousa? Um, and that's kind of where we're, we're investigating now and kind of why we've chosen this route compared to the others where you know the yeah the the legal framework might be looser and therefore actually harder to kind of pin down the the key parts we want to keep yeah so one of the main benefits of a foundation over an ev for example is we can keep the way the open source board is founded we can keep the way membership works the organization of open source as it exists at the moment can basically stay as it is and will continue to be as it is, but we now have a legal entity behind us to support that, which is, whereas if you go for an EV, there is rules about how the board is made, how the members are made up, and that's not necessarily 
what we're doing at the moment, which would be a big change. Yeah, in terms of running both organizations and EV as well as a foundation, they have similar taxation and accounting rules, so we are not gaining a benefit from one or the other. Um, in terms of setup, the foundation is slightly more afford, but we can also take advantage there from the experiences that, for example, uh, the Document Foundation has already made. So they have already been preparing the ground with uh, German legal authorities uh, to set up a foundation for a free software software project. Right. So my proposal is before we describe the potential next steps, what are your questions or remarks? Anybody? Hans. Yeah, much, much closer, thanks. And just to add to this uh, discussion, I have, um, as you're probably aware, I've set up several foundations and EVs in the cultural uh, sector in the Netherlands and um, my experience is also that if you indeed have a very singular focus in mind you want to do long term and especially also in, in keeping contractual relationship with upstream partners like SUSE uh, a foundation is much more stable what you see in the cultural sector is that um, the, uh, the association model works for individual artists working together, collaborating on certain projects, um, but you very rarely see it for things like festival organizations or, or whatnot. So I'm, I'm absolutely convinced for you that you've chosen the right uh, type of entity. I also think that if you look at associations as they are called in the, uh, like the Drupal Association, um, which is a governing board for the uh, Drupal community. They are not actually an association in the rights, uh, in the legal sense, they're a foundation. And because they're a foundation, they can actually organize Drupalcom, receive sponsorships uh, and whatnot. So just my two cents, I think you're doing the right thing. And on a personal note, I'm very happy to finally see this materialize because I've tried to sponsor Open Studio Conference before, in 2013, I've managed to sponsor it. Don't ask me how it works. And then in 2015, I organized Open Studio Conference. Also, don't ask me how it works. <laughs> but um, it's, it's awesome to see you uh, pushing this forward. So compliments to the board. Yeah, thanks, Hans. Other questions? Anna. You have said that at the moment it's not possible that we donate money to other organizations, and that is not true. I mean, we are sponsoring at the moment many, many, many organizations, many conferences, and we are doing it at the moment with SUSE's money, and we are speaking about quite a lot of money. And then my question is, in the moment we have the foundation, we will, you say Open SUSE will be able to do these donations. I wonder with, with money. I mean, uh, is SUSE going to give us some, or give Open SUSE some budget? Or how is it going to happen? What's happened with travel support, for example? So I guess the, uh, I guess the um, open SUSE being able to give to other people, we already do, but potential, but that always goes through SUSE. So this would give the board the opportunity to go under these exceptional circumstances. We want to give money to someone else where we haven't without going through SUSE, which we haven't done in the past. But that's probably, of all the reasons we've given, that being able to give money to other people is the far lesser reason than being able to receive money. So I'll, I'll speak in with two hats on. First, as current owners as a treasurer, um, we don't do a huge amount of uh, sponsorships of other projects. Um, we regularly sponsor GNOME, KDE. We have uh, an arrangement with Fedora where we sponsor each other. Um, but it's not, if we want to sponsor a project, we still have to go through SUSE, get the approvals. And there are times where we would like to sponsor a project or a community or an event, etc., that may be close to conflicting with SUSE uh, for whatever reason, being a company with commercial requirements, etc. They have um, much stricter sensibilities about some of these things, whereas as a community, we are much more relaxed about those 
uh, concerns. Uh, so that, that's one aspect. Yes, we do do sponsorship, but we could be better with the sponsorship that we're doing. Um, my other hat on is as a sponsor of the Open Susa conference, it's really complicated to get the money to sponsor the conference. Okay, so mm. I've got budget. Yes, it is. I want to provide that budget to Open Susa for the conference. It's really complicated because if we just give it directly to Susa. It has to go through Sousa's accounting, et cetera, whatnot, and then it could quite easily, uh, and has done long ago in the past, got lost in somebody's cost center, et cetera. Um, we have an arrangement at the moment for um, some affiliates of OpenSUSE to be able to receive the money for us who can then do something in return. Um, but that's not necessarily the best way of handling that money. If we could provide that money directly to the Open Sousa project, the project can then go, okay, this partner was very generous in their sponsorship donation. We only need to use X amount for the conference. We then have additional sponsorship funding that we can then procure either hardware or we can put additional funds towards TSP, et cetera. By doing a foundation, uh, et cetera, it's actually beneficial for SUSE from a financial perspective. Uh, being a non-profit, et cetera, there are tax benefits, obviously. Um, so we're not saying that we don't want SUSE's money uh, and we don't want SUSE to participate in any aspect of the project. We most certainly want them to participate. Um, and it's not about independence. Um, this is more about uh, less dependence and somewhat more autonomy to make our own decisions to do things, um, but still being able to keep that connection close. So I, I understand that it, is, it will be easy to operate but still, any of what you say answer my question, where is the money coming from? Because if we have no money, then we cannot donate anything. So, I mean, have we already spoken something with SUSE? Will they give us some money? Yeah, so, I mean, nothing is set in stone with any of this because, you know, it needs the agreement of the community, it needs the agreement of SUSE, it need, you know, it, yeah. So, you know, we're at, the, we're at the stage now where we can talk about this and we've had discussions with SUSE kind of at this level. The general ideas are along the lines of at least some of the budget that SUSE currently has for sponsoring Open SUSE and the other stuff you know, around that would m almost certainly be you know, a regular donation to this foundation. We don't have the numbers. You know, that's to be discussed and negotiated and figured out. Um, and given this model of doing everything we're currently doing plus the new stuff, we don't necessarily need the numbers in the sense of, you know, we, we do okay now, we do sponsor stuff, we, 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 we make it work somehow. So even if, if the, the foundation starts, you know, with pretty much zero, you know, we learn our lessons that way, we develop it over time, you know, and then, you know, Sousa could end up finding, okay, well, this, now we can stop worrying about all the conference nonsense and make it the foundation's problem. So, you know, it, the nice thing with this model is we can kind of organically grow it as we figure out how it works from, from all sides. Sorry. So I'm kind of excited to see how this is going to play out. But there's a, there's a couple of things that uh, uh, I'm a little unclear about. So the first one is currently today with, like, for example, the OpenSUSE build service, there is this list at the top right corner of all the sponsors and stuff. I don't know exactly how that kind of arrangement thing is going, but like, have you guys thought about like, how we could either a make that a process that is a little bit more clear or obvious or like how to uh, how to preserve that relationship because from what I understand Sousa provides the overwhelming majority of, of those resources there and how would we uh, make sure that we don't accidentally get into a situation where we're suddenly starved of all the things and you know that's the, those are the kinds of unpleasant things that nobody likes to think about but it's like you don't want to be put into that situation um, and, yeah, so. 
Okay, I'll take it. Um, yeah, with, with that kind of thing of, of sort of the concerns of, you know, stuff that SUSE is currently providing, like the build service, you know, is, is this going to scare them away and whatever. This is, you know, we, we've already started these discussions. We, you know, we, we had Thomas Giacomo here on, on, on the first day of the conference. You know, he came out with the dinner, with, with the board for a dinner the night before the conference. We basically gave him this presentation. We basically had this discussion. You know, the, 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 from hit from Sousa's side, you know, Sousa is committed to keep, you know keeping Open Sousa on this footing it is right now and helping it to expand. So, you know, the, the, these discussions are not scaring anybody at Sousa. You know, it, and, and you know, it's we're gonna. That's why we're doing them this way to make sure that doesn't happen. Him first. And with regards to the, uh, the build service, as somebody that has arranged donations to the build service, um, it's complicated having to go through the corporate structures, etc., because of the legalese and, and all that sort of stuff. Having an independent, uh, having a less dependent entity um, makes things much, much easier, and we can actually grow that sponsorship. Uh, there are. Uh, companies uh, and willing sponsors who want to sponsor the project but refuse to deal with going through a corporate entity because they don't, not that they don't trust SUSE, um, they just want to make sure that 110% of that goes to the intended recipient, which is OpenSUSE. <coughs> Yeah, and for example, we have one one sponsor. I can't remember exactly which one. You know where that was the case. So you, you know you had all the usual negotiations about sponsorship and hardware transfer, and then because they wanted to be absolutely sure that that hardware was being used by OpenSUSE, you know, additional contracts had to be signed up. Of you know this, this hardware is being transferred to SUSE Linux GmbH for the sole purposes of being used by OpenSUSE, and that, that, it's that you know that, that gets complicated after all. You know this this really hope hopefully knocks some of that stuff down so that stuff becomes easier for all of us on SUSE's side and on open SUSE's side. Next question. Yeah, um, first of all, I think this is a good idea because I was asking for it the last three years already. Um, you can help anytime. Yeah, uh, the, the thing is that actually I guess I don't worry a lot about money and a lot about the donation thingy because this unleashes a lot of potential, I guess. Um, the only thing I worry about, or the only thing I'm, I would ask about, is uh, what will be the actually continuity in working thing. So, um, how will the board be set up in future? Will there be uh, some legal thing of the foundation or not? Like, will there be some written thing how the board will be set up? Is there already a draft or not that we can read? What will be the role of the chairman in this? Will this be still elected by ZUS or not? Um, will we all become members of the Open ZUS Foundation or not? Um, are there rules? Yada yada yada, and so on. This is an important thing for me. Uh, yeah, so you can trust me. There will not be only one page of Britain, probably so 110 at the or moment, something like that. At the, mo <laughs> at the moment, if you look at the wiki page for OpenSUSE, there is the existing rules that we define how the board is elected. There is the existing rules for how members or who can be a member that Richard needs to put back there. <laughs> um, but basically the idea is, without having gone through a lawyer yet, fundamentally we don't want that structure to change. The chairman will still be appointed by SUSE. Um, the I didn't ask for that, by the way. No. Um, the, um, board, the board will still be voted by the members in the same way it is now. Um, those rules have a current clause that we can have a vote and half the members can change those rules, so if it comes to a point in the future where we think that should be, the members think that should be changed, they'll be free to vote on that and change that structure, but we're not planning on changing that in a drastic way. Uh, to give you an idea about the next steps that we currently foresee, probably not complete, um, first of all, this discussion will start it again or continue it on the OpenSUSE project mailing list. At a certain point in time, then, we will have a vote of the members whether they agree to go to a foundation structure. And then if we have a qualified majority, uh, then we will kick off the next step. That means, for example, that we sit together uh, with lawyers, uh, with experts to discuss uh, how the charter of the foundation should look like. And this charter will be phrased in that way that the uh, 
our position as NGO for free software will be more or less carved in stone. Um, as uh, Simon already said, we will try to keep uh, the rest as it is. And as soon as we then have the foundation set up, uh, the current members of the OpenSUSE project can opt in to go into this uh, foundation. For, for legal reasons, we cannot force you to go over there, but you receive a mail and says, yeah, I want to go for the OpenSUSE foundation, and then your membership is transferred one by one into the OpenSUSE foundation. Yeah, and sort of in parallel to, to that on the mailing list, you know, I'll be talking at SUSE, uh, you know, to, about, you know, getting their support for, you know, helping, you know, some logistically things like, you know, uh, assigning budget to help us, for example, maybe fund a, a lawyer, so we have, you know, legal advice for this, you know, separate from SUSE's lawyers, so, you know, there's no conflict of interest there, um, of, um, you know. After the charter, of course, almost certainly we'll have a second membership vote of actually accepting the charter. So, you know, the community's you know, going to be you know, deciding the, the absolute fate on this. Um, yeah, but that's, that's the current where we are today. Next question. Um, so, you've explained why, why a foundation rather than an EV, and that all makes total sense. Um, what about an umbrella organization like LF or SPI? Is that any... So for the vast majority of them, we are too big and we'll create too much work, so they don't want to. Um, they all charge around a 10% fee, and so we can probably, with the amount of money coming through, okay. we would instead be able to use that money to fund someone or ask Susan nicely to fund someone to do the management for us. So the board doesn't expect to have to sit down and run the foundation doing all the explicit work. And to kind of give a personal add-on, I mean, I, I was personally quite fond of, um, even with those things, you're quite fond of, of looking at like um, SPI, because SP, um, that's what like Debian are using, for example, for an arch for their, and, and, yeah, and SPI is a, a 503C uh, charity in the States, and in Europe, because of course, we're mo you know, lots of us are in Europe here, um, they have a, a chapter, or a, a friendly association of, of FFII.EV, who basically do the same things, take money, same, yeah, and they work together. Um, looking at this recently, we've suddenly realized like SPI and FFII aren't really talking to each other anymore, um, and, that, and that kind of thing makes you realize, okay, you know, yeah, you know jumping from a situation of, of a good working relationship with, with one to, to then being like totally dependent on another, which you don't have as good a relationship with. Like, like let's kind of push this a little bit towards the foundation idea of, okay, we, we, can, we can build something here that is rock solid on like every side of the aspect. So I also applaud this uh, decision. I think foundation is a good way to, to go. However, there is some, some caveat and um, uh, I was on a bar board of a organization which used to be a foundation, a uh, lot smaller than OpenSUSE, of course, that was the XORG Foundation, uh, which eventually ended up under the umbrella of SPI for a very simple reason. Um, uh, the uh, board was constantly struggling because we didn't have access to, to legal counsel, because, unless we, of course, paid a lawyer. Uh, we didn't have access to, to accounting, so it was always a struggle to file taxes. Um, um, international money transfer was really difficult. We didn't, sometimes we didn't know how to do this. And all of these things got resolved by going under an umbrella because they had all these services and knew um, how to do all these things. So maybe this is not an issue here. Um, and I certainly think that it's a better solution uh, than an umbrella as well. So one of the conditions that the board has put fairly firmly on going forward in this way is to partner with SUSE for them to provide us with someone who can help us do the accounting side, do the legal side. We haven't obviously looked at the specifics of what that will look like yet, but one of the key points is we would like someone, we would like either SUSE to fund OpenSUSE to the level that OpenSUSE can deal, uh, uh, employ someone to do that, or SUSE employs someone on OpenSUSE's behalf to take care of those things so that it is not something that the project has to worry about. SUSE has quite a commitment to providing OpenSUSE with everything they need. They haven't changed that commitment. That commitment's still ongoing. And 
as we've discussed this with Susa, we've seen this is just an extent, that sort of role is an extension of that commitment to provide Open Susa with something, with everything it needs. Yeah, I have a question that's uh, logistic of uh, the money is understandable, but what about the people? I mean, that's uh, the people that's working in Susa supporting the project, etc. Is there any case that OpenSUSE then will start to hire the people to work on their priorities because they think that this or that project should go this way and SUSE think differently? Um, will be there some separation in this manner or not? Um, that's a good question. I'll let Andrew answer it. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, there's an example of where OpenSUSE has gone in a different direction to where SUSE is going, and that's Cubic. Yeah. Okay? So you've got uh, CASP from SUSE. I never said I was going to throw him under the bus. <laughs> OpenSUSE went down the Cubic route, SUSE went down the CASP route, and they're quite divergent. Um, and that's a healthy competition, if you will. Um, you know, it's just like if, you know, you're two siblings, uh, two brothers, two sisters, whatever, there's always an element of uh, competition, trying to be better than the other one, but at the end of the day, you're still a part of a family, uh, and you come to an agreement ultimately at the end of the day, in one shape or another. Um, I think, for me, this approach isn't, as I mentioned, it's not about independence. Um, it's about enhancing the existing relationship, um, giving us a little bit more flexibility. Uh, as an example, in the past, when the Document Foundation was founded, SUSE were a founding member, but due to commercial requirements and reasons, they had to withdraw their seat. Now, we wanted to ensure that we kept that relationship with the TDF um, because it's close to everyone's hearts, etc. So we had to work on, on getting somebody from the OpenSUSE community to stand in uh, and replace the SUSE seat. That's an example of where we have different views, but we actually work together well. Um, and so, even though we're doing something differently to what Suze is doing, it actually benefits both of us. And so, I think it's not something that the board has actively discussed, being able to employ people to do certain things. We've, if we ever got to the position where we had enough money, though, and a future board wanted to look at it, I think it's important that the structure we set up will therefore allow that. And that's. And that's actually another reason why some of the umbrella organisations don't work, because they make it very hard to employ people. But whereas others put, don't. putting my, my SUSE chairman hat on now, you know, one of the uh, uh, one of the first concerns, uh, you know, raised by senior management SUSE as we discussed this is, you know, you know, this all sounds really good, you know, it's all sound, but you know, the you know SUSE wants to make sure that whatever Open SUSE creates there. You know, it's always going to be open for open for SUSE to be able to contribute to, and that's you know that's going to be one of the things that you know we, we've already agreed we all want that. So, you know, we don't necessarily know how we're going to reflect that into the charter of the foundation, but that's definitely something that we aim to have reflected in the charter of the foundation. So, you know, whatever happens, you know, the Open SUSE project is always there for SUSE to contribute to and be part of, and and you know there will always be a, a healthy working relationship with that. I would like to ask about what for me is the most important aspect of the foundation that I haven't heard yet. Um, what happened with transparency? Uh, is it going open source to make public what we are spending the money on if we have a foundation? And when I, make, when I say make public, I mean publishing who we are giving money to, the amount, the date, so completely public. Um. Without having the legal advice, um, what I would say is that the intention certainly is to be completely transparent. There may be areas where some 
funding or some line items can't be reported for legal issues. Um, but as an example, we could show what's being spent on uh, staffing. You know, so if we have to employ um, a secretary or, or something like that for those things, then yes, that would be shown on the accounting. We can show, um, like I say, this is all without legal verification. I don't see an issue with showing how much is being spent on TSP, how much is being spent on sponsorships, but it's still uh, needing to be discussed and, and verified. But I'm going to give my personal view anyway. Um, the one of the things I'm really excited with this is the ability to make a lot of this stuff, which, which we just can't make transparent now, way more transparent. If you look at the examples out there with things like how KDEEV do it, which is kind of somewhat narrow, you know, you see the big bins of what KDEEV is spending, but not you know, more compared to like the TDF, where it's, it's you know, a little bit more ex extensive. You know, I would personally want to lead to more sort of the TDF's example of, of you know, really pushing the transparency as, as far as we can Legal advice, legal advice permitting. Yeah, so um, not exactly legal advice here, but um, in the Netherlands we have a, a special tax exemption status for a foundation. It's a, it's a, a foundation for um, doing, uh, let's say, uh, use, uh, useful projects in communities. And they have very clear rules and regulations about what you must report on in uh, uh, in your annual papers and that's pretty much as transparent as you can get it so if the foundation open is aspiring for wants to have that kind of tax um, breaks then you automatically end up being uh, quite transparent in basically anything there are certain areas at least in the netherlands in which you can um, avoid having to like name sponsors by name if a sponsor doesn't want that but then you have to um, address this to the tax service directly then you don't have to publish the name of the sponsor in your annual reports but you have to inform the tax uh, authorities on uh, that procedure so it, it, by definition this will be much more transparent than it ever can be when integrated uh, in a company and there's rules for that so of course, I was not speaking about the things that are illegal. I mean, if you cannot publish something, you cannot. But for example, publish, so saying how much money you spend in conference, I mean, that you tell me you spend 10,000 euros in conferences, say me absolutely nothing. Uh, and I don't, see, I don't think it will be illegal to say what conference and how much amount of money we are giving every conference we spend. So I think that is the kind of transparency I was speaking about. So I mean, of course, you employ a secretary, I don't want that you tell me the name, I don't need that. But that we are spending that amount of money on personal? Um, let me share the example of the TDF. Uh, all the ledgers are published. Uh, obviously, uh, there are some numbers that are aggregated because <laughs> you can't share uh, how much you are paying uh, uh, a particular employer, for example, but everything is uh, it's available. Uh, you can go on the website, uh, on the foundation uh, section of the website, uh, and you can download the, uh, the lectures, and then you can see uh, how much is uh, spent uh, for the conference, for the annual conference, uh, how many donations uh, are... Uh, the, the foundation is uh, receiving, so you, you can uh, obviously see, see everything. And if you have time, you can also uh, do the maths and <laughs> at the end understand uh, where, the, uh, where the money are going. In any case, if you don't want to uh, deal with, uh, with the spreadsheet uh, uh, or if you are not an expert in uh, budget and it's not something uh, really immediate uh, <laughs> to understand and to read, uh, for example, TDF is producing uh, uh, an annual report with uh, all the details about uh, the uh, activities done uh, by the community and there is also the uh, financial part uh, described that describes uh, how the donations are spent 
uh, which are the plans for the next uh, years. So you, you can have uh, everything. Obviously, uh, we need to discuss the uh, details for uh, the Open Source Foundation, but uh, the Dogman Foundation is a foundation um, that is uh, a German one uh, in uh, Berlin, so probably <laughs> will be something uh, similar. But that, that it is possible to do, I'm pretty sure. So my question is, is going Open Source to go in this direction or try to make public everything that is possible? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> this one is the idea. Obviously, I'm not a legal, but uh, I'm the chairperson for TDF, so I, I saw the, the details on uh, that side of the foundation, and I, I can answer that it's possible. So why not to go on, uh, on this direction? This one is the idea. Uh, related bit of experience, I guess. Um, uh, I've been uh, involved in running, running Linux ConfAU in Australia um, one year, and that's put on by uh, Linux Australia, which is a, an incorporated association in Australia, um, which tries to be as transparent as possible about all things. And so um, LA will um, publish figures for how much it spends when it runs conferences. It gives community grants to people that will say how much was spent on grants and things. And it will be as transparent as it can be about all those things. So all of that gets released somehow. Um, but where it gets tricky is um, money received as sponsorship for conferences that it runs because if you've got, say, um, Red Hat and SUSE and Ubuntu all sponsoring the same conference and all appearing at the same level of sponsor, they may actually have paid slightly different amounts of money each depending on exactly what they negotiated with who was running sponsor liaison. And so the organisation can't say individually how much each sponsor of a given level contributed or we would piss off our sponsors. Um, but we can say as a whole how much was received. So I don't know if that's sort of an example of the sort of tricky things you can have with wanting complete transparency but not, you know, being able to get as close as you can, if you like. Next question from anybody? Comments? Feedback? No? Yes? No? Okay. Um, so, what do we have next? One thing I, I would like to point out is that we as a board are presenting this idea, but we need all of you. Uh, I've been around for 15 years in the SUSE and open SUSE communities, and I've seen this discussion before, and not just a single time. And the last times it didn't work because was b mainly because we as a community did not step up and do things. It can't be done by the board on its own. We need your input, we need your feedback. So please help out if this community is dear to your heart. Yep, and yeah, that's it. So thank you very much. No Did oh. so Christian has Christian always, always has some more things. There's some one last thing in the board meeting. So I had a bet with the board. Like, do you manage to send out all the meeting minutes until the conference? If I would have managed that, then yesterday you would have seen me with a green hat, so that you have something to laugh about me. And then I thought, let's turn that bit around. And we have exactly one person who has to send out minutes from March. Here's your head. <laughs> Thank you very much. It suits you pretty well. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Well, that's, that's now over to you. Thanks, Doug. Okay. So, all right. Um, Thanks for being here. Uh, the next part is a giveaway of a tuxedo laptop. So if you could put your hand underneath your chair, you might find a 3D printed Kiko. Anybody? There might, I mean, it might be around you. You can check. Stuhlreihe, die ich mache, könnte sich lohnen. Mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a distraction. 
<laughs> Anybody? Really? I wonder if it dropped. 3D? Uh, well, I'll just see a mad rush. It's somewhere in that area over there. <laughs> kind of, kind of near. Taped to the bottom, right in the front. <laughs> Look at that. There. there we go. Come on up here. Go ahead. No, it's mine. What? I don't know anything. What? So, so, yeah. So this. Uh, this lovely gift is sponsored to us from, uh, from Tuxedo Computers. Um, what model is it? Uh, oh, okay. So, yeah, but it's a uh, yeah, brand spanking new 15 inch laptop from uh, Tuxedo with a customized back uh, monitor full of chameleons, apparently. I haven't actually seen it yet. So, um, if, you, if you wouldn't mind opening it up, because I'm curious how this looks too. Because Tuxedo now is selling, like, yeah selling open SUSE laptops, and this is the first one with a nice customized screen that I've seen. Oh, and it's all incredibly well packed, yeah. I've got it. There we go. Whoa. Oh, that didn't 